Transformers have become absolutely huge in the deep learning world. Ever since their introduction with the paper, attention was all you need, they have just burst onto the scene. They have really become sort of the mainstay of generative AI. And generative AI is when the neural network is generating things based on the input. And the input very often is the output from the neural network forming kind of a, a, a complete loop so that it continues to generate, say, text as ChatGPT or a similar technology is conversing with you. We're going to start with just a simple introduction to the natural language processor application of these transformers. And we're going to continue in the next couple of sections as we look at both natural language processing applications of transformers. And then in the next module, we're going to get into images and stable diffusion and stylegan and all kinds of other really amazing technologies. So if we look at this module, and I have the code linked in the description, we're looking at the transformers, and they typically operate in a variety of different ways. You can do a vector to a sequence that's useful for image captioning, so it tells you what the image is. You can do a sequence to a vector that's useful for our sentiment analysis, and you can do sequence to sequence, that's language translation. And that's really the topic of this particular module that we're in. So here is a high level diagram of a transformer. And this is looking at a transformer that is designed just to take in a sentence and then translate it to, a, uh, to another language, in this case, Spanish. So we're giving it the cat likes milk and we have a starting and an ending token. This is very important. Tokens are used tremendously in transformers. Tokens are not necessarily just words. They can be, they're usually parts of words. And then there's other system tokens. The most common are start and end when you tell the transformer that you're beginning or, or ending. Now, a transformer, it has a number of different parts to it. So here you have an encoder and this is taking in this sequence, and the encoder encodes it. It has learned to encode it, and it translates it into a hidden state. This is similar to how human minds work. As you're looking at me, your, your brains are developing some sort of internal state that is the information that you're receiving and what you think of it. And, and then it's going to go to the decoder. You're going to click the like button. All, all those kind of, kind of things will, will happen. But no, in all seriousness, the hidden state then goes into the decoder, which is going to calculate the next word probabilities, and this carries leg. So the next word probabilities are just the top words that might come next. And it's also being fed in kind of really from two directions. Also, it's being fed in how much of this sentence has been decoded yet. And the, the sentence in Spanish it's building up this as it goes. So it's, it keeps on predicting the next word as it goes through. This is really how transformers work through the encoder, decoder, and this gives them a tremendous flexibility. There's a number of important parameters that you will specify on these. Just the, um, the number of heads that's similar to the, to the channels in the convolution neural networks and other, other things that really you will op optimize these for the overall structure. Now this is the, this is from the attention is all you need. And this is a more technical sort of form in this because you're seeing these multi-head attention layers that are really making this whole thing up, the feed forward layers, and then the attention. Uh, these, atten these three attentions, that's really the key of this particular model that we are looking at. So the encoding, I'm not going to go super, super deep on, on this because the, we are focusing more on the application than the theory. But what's going on here is we do the normal input encoding. This is what takes the input and takes those words, parts of words, other things, and converts them into the tokens that are going to go actually into the transformers. We do positional encoding, and notice we do it on both the 
the input and then the outputs as it keeps shifting them and, and adding the, the next word or the next token on. The positional encoding encodes a sine wave, that's why you see the wave there, into the actual numbers of the embeddings that you're getting for it, the tokens. And that makes the importance related to where it was. So that, that encodes the position of where it was in the sentence, and that's being done on both sides. On the encoder side, you can see that it is dealing with the, the, at the attention layer. Uh, it's adding and normalizing. We're always adding and normalizing. We're adding the sine wave. And then this goes to a feed forward dense layer, just like we've dealt with before. And then one more add and normalize layer. And then this goes into the attention for the, the decoder. You can see there's really two attention layers as the outputs are going in, the outputs, the, the, the new input going in. So it's very contextual in terms of the sentence that was coming into it. And then finally, output for the next layer goes through a dense layer. Again, the batch normalization, and then the final linear layer that leads to a softmax. So the softmax is picking from the available tokens and is telling you which of those tokens has the highest probability of occurring next. And you can see there's a variety of predefined system tokens in most of these. Star token, end token, um, something unknown. That's something that failed to be tokenized because it's it's so completely unusual that it's never seen it before. Like if you were to put in character a character set that the transformer had never seen before. And then padding because the sequence size is usually bigger than the input to it. So that's just the high, high level introduction to transformers, which we're going to see in much greater depth in the next few parts of this module. So if this was useful, please give the video a like. And subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the upcoming modules as they come for this PyTorch in Python Deep Learning.